The first kind of redox reaction is called a synthesis reaction. It's called synthesis because to synthesize means to make. You make a compound out of two elements. For example, when sodium and chlorine combine, you make, well, let's see, we have two sodiums here, we have two chlorines here, we have a coefficient of two here, so that means we have Na, that takes care of the two Na's, we have two Cl's, two Cl's. We make sodium chloride. Now, when the elements are by themselves, they have no charge. When they're in a compound, they do have charge. That's how they stick together to make the compound in the first place. Sodium has no charge by itself. Chlorine has no charge by itself. Sodium is plus one, chlorine is negative one, because you can look those charges up on the periodic table. Oxidized means to go more positive in charge by losing electrons. Sodium goes from zero to plus one. Therefore, sodium zero lost its valence electrons to become plus one. Reduced chlorine went from zero to minus one. So each charge was reduced to a negative value, which means that the sodium, which lost electrons, gave them to the chlorine. In this next reaction, lithium reacts with oxygen to form lithium oxide. Four lithiums, two times what is four? Two. We have two oxygens, two times what is two? One. Lithium oxide. Lithium and oxygen both have no charge because they're not in a compound. If they were charged, then they'd be in a compound. Plus one, minus two, according to the periodic table. Therefore, lithium becomes more positive by losing its valence electrons. Oxygen becomes more negative by gaining its valence electrons, which means that lithium gives its valence electrons to oxygen. For this next example, we're going to form iron 2 nitride. We have a coefficient of 3 here. There's three irons here, so we have three irons here. Here we have a coefficient of 1 and 2, N2. Because remember, nitrogen is diatomic, a Brinkelhoff. Iron has no charge and neither does nitrogen. If they did, they'd be in a compound. Plus 2, minus 3. You can look this up on the periodic table. Nitrogen is minus 3. Two of them are minus 6. Therefore, iron has to be plus 6. Divided by the three irons means each iron is plus 2 in charge. Iron starts off as zero, it ends as plus two. It lost its two valence electrons. Fe zero is oxidized. Because nitrogen's charge went down to a negative value, N two zero was reduced. So the iron gave the electrons, its valence electrons up to nitrogen. The purpose of synthesis reactions is to make compounds from elements for use in either manufacturing or commercial purposes. Here's an example of a synthesis reaction. We have two Na's, we have Cl2. Notice how the Cl's are bonded together. When they react, the Cl2 breaks apart, and the Na's, plus one and Cl minus one bond, Na and Cl bond, giving us two NaCl's the balanced reaction. The second type of redox reaction you can have is a decomposition reaction. You can use this to find out decomposition of a compound. That was a joke. The composition, decomposition, whatever. Decomposing compounds is very handy if you've got an element in the compound and you have need of that element. Decompose the compound and you form the elements. In the compound, it's connected by charged ions. When the elements are separated, they have no charge. 2KBr forms 2K plus. There's two Brs, there's no coefficient. Br2, Brinkelhoff. Bromine is diatomic when it's by itself. K is plus one, Br is minus one. These guys are both zero because they're all by themselves. If they were charged, they'd be in a compound. K goes from plus one down to zero. That means it picked up a negative electron. K plus one was reduced down to zero by gaining back an electron. The bromide ion goes from negative one to zero by losing a valence electron. 
Therefore, the Br minus 1 gives up electrons to K plus 1. In the next reaction, we're going to have copper oxide and we're going to decompose it. We have two coppers here, we have a two in front, so copper is one of the two elements that this decomposes into. There's no coefficient here, there's two oxygens, so it's diatomic oxygen, because oxygen is a Brinkelhoff. It's diatomic when it's by itself. Compound breaks up into the two original elements. Copper is plus two. Why? Because oxide is minus two, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So whatever oxygen's minus is, copper has to have the same size plus. Over here, since they're not connected, they have no charge. You need to have charges for a bond to form. No charges, no ionic bond. The copper goes from plus two down to zero. Its charge is reduced to a lower value. Therefore, copper plus two is reduced. The oxygen goes from minus two up to zero. It lost two of its electrons. So oxygen minus two is oxidized. Electrons go from the oxide ion to the copper two ion. In this last example, we're going to decompose a compound to form aluminum and oxygen. The original compound contained aluminum and oxygen. There's four aluminums on this side, so we need four on this side. Two times two is four aluminums. We have three times two is six oxygens on this side, so we need six oxygens on this side. Two times three equals six. Aluminum is plus three according to the periodic table. Oxide is minus two. These guys, again, they're not in a compound, they don't have any charge. The aluminum being plus three going to zero, its charge was reduced by gaining three electrons, Al plus three. The oxide goes from minus two to zero by losing two electrons. This reaction is used for many different purposes. If you want to find out what the composition of a substance is, just decompose it and analyze the elements you get out of it. Also, most of the metals that we use today come from metal ore. And one of the ways to extract the metal from the metal ore is by decomposing the ore. That way we get the metal and everybody's happy. Yay! In a decomposition reaction, the compound, 2CaO, decomposes. Oxygen, being diatomic when it's by itself, forms a molecule of O2 and the two calciums remain separate. 